God. Come on, let's put our hands together and receive God's silence. And pause on your chastel man. Hallelujah. of the blind there's no one like you none like you into the darkness you shine out of the ashes we rise there's no one like you not like you. Can you lift your voice and bless the name of the Lord? Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. Lord, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer. Awesome and power. Our God. Our God. Our God is greater. an encounter tonight please lift your voice and pray lift your voice and pray someone praying for an encounter in the name of Jesus the son of the living God Give me an encounter tonight in the name of Jesus. For in Jesus' name I pray. For in Jesus' name. I pray Amen. father we pray that you speak to our hearts one more time let your word come with fire in the name of Jesus tonight let the sick be healed let the oppressed be delivered let Jesus be glorified for in Jesus name I pray let's honor our fathers in this place give them a big big God bless you and one more time, please help me celebrate Pastor Julian, such a great man of God. Thank you. Hallelujah. Please be seated. We began our discussion in the afternoon talking about revival and the role of the church. I did say that the state of any nation and any society is a reflection of the kind and the quality of the spiritual voices within that territory. Hallelujah. That the conviction of the average believer is a reflection of the kind of training and mentorship that that individual has gone through or otherwise. We did agree that when there is the absence of the knowledge of the one true God, when there are no teaching priests and when there are no laws, that society would plunge naturally into decadence. Hallelujah. He says, for a long time, Israel had no true God, no teaching priest, and no law. I did tell us in the afternoon that if we want to restore the spirit of revival, we must forget about government and industries and get to the church. The church has always been responsible 
for enforcing and promoting God's program on earth. Are we together? And um, we examined a few things. I did say that there are three factors that affect the quality of believers within any territory. Thank you for the sound. Thank you. Number one, I said the absence of genuine spiritual encounters when a believer when an individual does not sustain a healthy spiritual encounter number one that person will most likely not be saved even though around the truth just because you are around the truth does not mean you will be blessed by it many people were around the truth some made money from the truth other people use the truth to promote their personal ambitions. Only a few were changed by the truth. Hallelujah. So you can be in church, you can be a worker in church, we observed, and yet not have any encounter with Jesus. I remember challenging us in the afternoon that we must return to a point where Jesus Christ becomes the epicenter of our Christian adventure. More than miracles, more than prophecy more than the gifts of the spirit we must restore jesus it says john 17 and verse 3 and this is eternal life that they may know thee the one true god and jesus whom thou hast sent this is eternal life the bible says in john chapter 3 and verse 16 for god so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son that whosoever this blessing is for whosoever whosoever believes in him that individual should not perish but have everlasting life that god did not send his son to the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved are we together romans chapter 10 when you read from verse 9 and 10 it says the word is nigh thee in your mouth and in your heart even the word of faith that we preach that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the lordship of jesus believing in your heart that god raised him from the dead he said thou shalt be saved for with the heart man believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made even unto salvation so we said that believers need to come to a point where they encounter jesus christ as the only key to the kingdom there are many keys of the kingdom but there is only one key to the kingdom hallelujah number two the second reason i did observe also that beyond just giving your life to jesus you must sustain hunger remember our teaching on hunger that hunger is a proof of health when an individual is sick among the many initial signs is a loss of appetite so the moment there is a loss of spiritual appetite is a sign that your life is under attack then number two we said the second factor that affects the quality of believers within a territory is the presence or the absence of discipleship and methodical mentorship when believers are not discipled there will be a haphazard growth pattern their growth will not be sustained it will not be methodical the early church practiced that acts chapter 2 and verse 42 the bible says and the apostles they submitted to the doctrine of the apostles and of fellowship of prayer and of breaking of bread that was the pattern they continued steadfastly the bible says hallelujah it is for the intent of maturing the saints that he gave unto some apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers the bible says for the perfecting or maturing of the saints that the saints now being matured will do the work of the ministry till we all come to a state in the spirit called the unity of faith is that true yes to the fullness of the stature of the measure of christ he says that we henceforth be not tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine and the slight of men wherein they lie to deceive so we gain stature and maturity to the degree to which we are mentored and the secret of the growth of the believer is doctrine doctrine is not an opinion doctrine are truths that are already scripturally established are we together now yes teaching opinions and personalized dealings will only produce various shades of error 
there are dealings that happen to an individual based on his work with God. It is profitable as far as the path earmarked for that individual is concerned, but may not be applicable to any other person. Are we together? There are three biblical conditions for any thought to be called a doctrine. Number one, it must be practiced in the Old Testament. We must see that truth or that thought reflected in the Old Testament. Number two, it must be captured in the ministry and the teachings of Jesus. Number three, it must be captured in the ministry and the teachings of the early church. Any thought or truth that does not pass this tripartite test cannot be called doctrine even if it is truth hallelujah so we must minimize turning our personalized dealings into doctrines in our work with god there are times where god gives us customized trainings based on our peculiar personalities or his the nature and the character of our call and by working in keeping with those those personalized dealings we can produce phenomenal results in mentoring younger believers we have to be wise to not turn those personalized dealings into doctrines let me give you one i've not started my teaching tonight what recapping on afternoon are we together so if if god seeing and knowing my vulnerability prohibits me to not have, say for instance, more than a million dollars in my account. That can be a unique instruction he gave me. Based on something about my personality he knows. He has studied my vulnerability and he has seen that if I step into certain levels of material affluence, it could affect my focus. He can give me a restriction that is unique to only me. And by obeying that restriction to honor his voice, I will excel in a certain way. Chances are excellent that when you come to ask me the secret of my results, I will, among the many things I will tell you, I will describe for you the unique limitations I have put in my life. But that does not mean it is doctrine. Because your call may demand that you don't keep that kind of thing. And if you now subscribe to the nature of my personalized dealing you may be hurting your call and your efficiency are we together so the church has been in a lot of trouble because there are many truths that work for individuals based on their work with god but did not pass the test to become doctrine so because every man of god is naturally emotionally connected to the principles you honor to get to where you were Chances are excellent that when you are teaching, your communication will largely be your experience. It is the reason why we must exalt the word of God above experiences. Because our experiences only worked for us, but they have not been tried. The word of God has been tried seven times. Are we together now? And then number three, we wrapped up by saying the third factor that affects the quality of believers in any territory is the abundance of the presence or otherwise of models individuals who embody and personify dimensions every realm in the spirit can be personified in an individual in fact that is one of the ways that god preserves his dimensions when you say the god of abraham the god of isaac and the god of jacob is the same God but his expression across these three people are different are we together now the God of Abraham is the one who blesses and lifts the God of Isaac is the one who expands and preserves the God of Jacob is the one who reveals himself in an encounter it is the same God but the dimensions are not the same Rapha will bring you healing not prosperity Jaira will bring you prosperity not healing are we together so we must have models physical models that will help to enhance transformation Kenya must know what authentic prophetic ministry looks like Kenya must know what authentic apostolic ministry looks like Kenya must know what authentic disciple looks like talking about what is not right is not the issue there must be models that embody what is the genuine approach 
Transformation is difficult without references. There must be a reference. It says, follow them who through faith and patience. There are some them that are worthy of following. So, Kenya must have sufficient people, not just a few, not just one or two. There has to be a, an abundance of models. What does kingdom prosperity look like? More than teaching it, an individual must become that living epistle of what it means to be blessed and lifted by God. An individual must embody what it means to carry the miracle working power of God. Today we are able to contend and press into certain dimensions because individuals in their earth work were able to embody this. Even in the Bible, they were archived in Hebrews 11. The Bible simply calls them elders. It says, now faith is, 11 verse 1 of Hebrews, the substance of things hoped for. He calls it the evidence of things not seen. He said, for by it the elders obtained a good report. Verse 3 says, through faith we understand. We were not there, but we understand that the aeons were framed by the word of God. Is that true? So that the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Then he starts to list those elders. Time will fail me to talk of Gideon and Jephthah and Barak, men who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, shut the mouth of lions, women who received their dead back to life. He, he personal, every one of those people represented a dimension of spiritual possibilities. If you want to see the fire of God engulf Kenya in a greater dimension, we must pray that God in heaven would raise individuals and so work upon them that they become accurate portraits of the various dimensions that he seeks to see revealed in Kenya. Are we together? So, our people will continue to make a lot of mistakes in the prophetic, for instance, until there are worthy models that will work in the prophetic accurate, accurately and with authentic grace. That way, it is now easy to know the right from wrong. Are we together? Every animal can roar like the lion, and they are right until the genuine lion roars. If they do not know the sound of the genuine lion, it is safe to assume anything that sounds like it is it. Hallelujah. No wonder when John came, they saw the, the way John was walking and operating. They said, are you sure this is not the Messiah? They came to ask him, are you the Messiah? He said, no, I am only the voice of one crying. As soon as John saw Jesus, he said, behold the lamb who takes away the sins of the world, Jesus. And he began to teach and all the signs of his Messiahship was shown in his ministry. It was clear, it was evident, and he had the audacity to tell people, follow me and I will make you. There has to be someone in Kenya, fathers and many people that God will continue to rise, who can boldly under God say, follow me as I follow Christ and you will be made. Follow me and you will learn the prophetic accurately. Follow me as I follow Christ and you will learn authentic apostolic ministry with grace, character, and balance. Follow me and you will learn what it means to be a kingdom entrepreneur without compromise. Blessed by God with the dignity of kingdom integrity, there must be models. Follow me. I am a representation of what diligence is. Do you know this is the whole idea of mantles? We shout about mantles and we really do not understand when a mantle comes upon you, it changes you to become something very unique so that there is a unique expression of God through you by reason of that mantle that should make you look like somebody in the Bible. Are we together? <laughs> Many people say, I'm carrying the mantle of Elijah. I'm carrying the mantle. No, 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 no. Listen, listen, listen. When you carry a mantle, the outworkings of the spirit through your life the holy spirit makes adjustment through your life so that there will be an outworking in your life that is traceable in scripture we can say your life is truly a portrait of abraham's we can study that pattern and we verify that that mantle is upon you did you not see it in the life of elisha 
when he carried the mantle of Elijah he didn't need to say I'm carrying it where is the Lord God of Elijah and the Bible says he struck the Jordan and he parted Hita and Tita and the sons of the prophet says surely the spirit of Elijah doth rest upon Elisha if you must tell people this man prayed for me you don't carry the grace it should speak mantles speak hallelujah so that was the that was the teaching in the afternoon now let's discuss a bit wherever we stop we'll just pray you know let me tell you this if you study if you study the revival of the 60s and 70s they had what we call camp meetings where you would dwell sometimes for 30 days for 60 days non-stop are we together doctrine after doctrine with the move of the spirit it was that kind of immersion that produced some of the people who are still standing today like our fathers our generation has a a very scarce just like rain coming upon people it takes a lot to know God and it takes a lot the investment of time is one of the seeds for growth you must be willing to invest time I know we live in a generation where we're in a rush to do everything justifiably so because of the times that we live in but let me tell you the sacrifice of your time is one of the things you must lay on the altar if you truly desire presence power and glory hallelujah by the way let me salute all of you who have endured here you know the Bible says that um, ye who have continued with me it takes stamina and endurance to receive some of you have been here since yesterday some of you since morning you've not even gone anywhere you remind me of myself in Reinhard Bonke's crusade standing for six hours because I desired something genuine hallelujah I stood for six hours after the first day by the second day I said no I may not have the resources and even access to meet the man of God at that time but I said no matter what it is I would try to serve let me serve that anointing and I remember they were pushing someone I saw them pushing people on wheelchairs coming there and I said can I help they said, well, you are not part of the committee. I said, what, what committee? You know where I came from? I came with, with hunger to receive. I, I wasn't a rebel. I was just, it was polite. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I had the privilege to push one of the wheelchairs. And while I was pushing, I said, Lord, this is how my crusades will be too. I have honored that grace. Without all contradiction, the less is blessed of the better. I remember standing there you've heard it in my teaching so I stood there from 3 p.m. Nigerian time till almost 9 p.m. I was tired but I was determined if you can see me he came just on the platform like this preached a very simple message and when he was done he needed to take a cup of water so they'll begin to minister the baptism and to minister miracles and that was when the Lord opened my eyes. It was my first encounter, the, a, the, the manifestation of the similitude of the Holy Spirit. I saw a bird, giant bird, bigger than this, this, um, this tent, just hovering around. I thought everybody was seeing it. Now, remember, I was already a man of God. And I was watching this my hunger had touched the heart of the king of kings i was tired but hungry hallelujah and when when that whole experience was over i was already back in the stage i didn't even know when i turned that was when the holy spirit took me to genesis chapter 1 verse 2 and 3 and darkness hovered round the face of the waters and elohim said light and the Lord taught me that the union of the movement of the spirit and the spoken word is what produces the miraculous it came by revelation it was not a lecture listen 
for someone tonight you are watching and you are listening because that is the character of the kingdom you must hear and see in the kingdom if you hear alone it is not complete you must hear and see Acts chapter 8 and verse 5 the Bible says Philip went and preached Christ in Samaria and the Bible says the people with one accord gave heed to those things which Philip spake hearing and seeing if it is God you must hear and you must see there is a dimension of the kingdom that can be tasted he said oh taste and see not just to believe it must translate into an experience hearing and seeing the miracles which he did for unclean spirits the next verse says cried out of people and those who were taken with palsies were healed and the bible says there was great joy in kenya there was great joy in that city are we together From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same, your name is to be hallowed. Adonai. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same. Your name is to be alone. Hallelujah. We'll discuss very briefly a topic that I captured revival come. Let's discuss the matters of revival now. Revival come. Hallelujah. In every generation, there is a cry and there remains a cry of the spirit to invade a people to invade a territory and birth the purposes of the kingdom allocated for that generation and for that dispensation it is the assignment of the men and the women of God in partnership with the word and the spirit are we together to work in synergy and alignment to ensure that the purposes of God as allocated for that dispensation is captured revealed and experienced if that does not happen then ministry did not happen hallelujah a revival is a possibility awakenings are full the history modern history is full of moments dramatic moments of the outpouring of the spirit dramatic moments of a heightened awareness of spiritual things a revival and a season of awakening is a season where men by reason of their alignment and recognition they grant the word of God and the ministry of the spirit supremacy over their life and over a predefined territory so a revival happens where God is able to penetrate the limitations in the heart of man and have his right of way and move so mightily among the people bringing repentance bringing revival bringing transformation bringing outpourings bringing advancement that is a revival and every once and again we see the spirit crying to move again in the midst of his people he says revive your work in the midst of the years to revive it again hallelujah Gideon was a young boy who was in hiding the list of his father's tribe when he received the visitation from the angel and he gave him a very strange salutation calling him a mighty man of valor he said no 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 don't bring that kind of thing I have heard of stories I've heard of several things that have happened where are they today we read through history we read through the Bible we read through books and we hear from our fathers moments in history where there was such an awakening an impartation of grace miracles that happened people encountered God to such a degree and a dimension you read about the Welsh revival for instance it was said that people would read just the newspaper 
of the revival happening and right there fire will just engulf cities hallelujah awakenings and revivals and i want you to know i said it in the morning i will say it again in addition to all of the prophetic voices within your land that have spoken kenya you are at the brink of another strange season of awakening and revival this is true and this is not only kenya this is sweeping across africa but there is a formation we'll get there shortly the entire east africa will be engulfed with such fire in the name of jesus christ revival will no longer be stories that we hear from fathers but the reality that becomes our experience if you're with me shout amen, amen. but you see there are requirements listen carefully now there are requirements that must be met if we are to host superior dimensions of god we are to capture these dimensions of power and of grace in our lives our churches our regions our territories the nation there are requirements that must be met leviticus chapter 9 and verse 6 please give it to us leviticus chapter 9 and verse 6 do we have it projected moses said this is the thing which the lord commanded that ye should do he says and the glory of the lord shall appear unto you there is always what to do if you want to host god there is always what to do there is a participatory role it is not all up to god uh -uh. god is ever willing but the formula has always been and remains the spirit and the bride say come the spirit and the bride say come if the spirit says come and the bride does not echo come nothing will be made manifest the bride there being the church so the spirit says revival the bride must also agree and say revival for revival to come the spirit says healing the bride must also say healing for healing to come for many years the spirit has been saying revival kenya revival now god has found a people like never before who are agreeing with the spirit the spirit and the bride say move oh god the spirit and the bride say heal oh god the spirit and the bride say invade our homes invade our offices invade government the spirit and the bride say come are we together now it is important for us to know um, the requirement if we are to frontier the purposes of God to birth and to preserve revival it is important for us to understand what God demands from us the reason I've studied a bit about revivals and the move of God I'm a student of history and I've studied why revivals die and why revivals did not last are we together most of it largely because of the humanity of men that is what I found as the ultimate answer to why revivals die that the men that frontier these revivals are human and if they do not understand the dynamics of remaining spiritual you can abort such a powerful program not being bad just being human are we together the Bible says in John chapter 1 and verse 6 John chapter 1 and verse 6 it's important for us to understand our corporate assignment as believers please look up we may have different things to do as far as our purpose is concerned in Christ but it's important for us to understand that all together as the body of Christ we have a corporate assignment there is a corporate mandate that is upon us as the church the bride of Christ that assignment 
is in John 1 verse 6 and 7. It says there was a man, just follow carefully, sent from God. Just leave the remaining part of that statement. There was a man sent from God. It's a revelation you need to understand. There was a man, you are a man, but you, Kenya just gave you a natural, um, a, 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 a geographic representation on earth. But the Bible traces where you came from and says you are sent from God. If you do not understand this as a revelation, you will never be able to capture the purposes of God. So, you are from Kenya. You are right sociologically, but spiritually, you may not be right. You are from heaven through Kenya to the earth. Are you seeing that now? Kenya was the physical point of transition where you found yourself. That means you are not limited by the realities that you find within the physical territory. Because the Bible says, he that cometh from above is above all. It's an indoctrination you must give yourself. It says there was a man. It is true that I am a man. But there is an implication to my being a man that is godlike based on my origin and based on where I came from. There was a man sent from God. That means my limitation will only be a reflection of the limitation of where I came from, not where I'm passing through. So it is possible that I come physically from a place and a background that has no advantage, but knowing that I was sent from God has a prophetic implication to my life. I can change the narrative physically because I am sent from God. Prophesy to yourself, say, sent from God. Notice, the Bible never said there was a man who came from God. Sent. That sent mentality is important for birthing and hosting a revival. And it has nothing to do with being an apostle or prophet. Sent. The word sent there means God did not scratch his head and just say, wow, you've arrived. There was a preparation. A body has thou prepared for me. There was a program. The idea of being sent tells you God meticulously planned your arrival. It does not matter the biological story that framed your physical arrival. Sent from God. He said, when I sent you, lackest thou anything. Not when you went, when I sent you. Are we together now? There was a man sent from God. When he now arrived Kenya, they called him Pastor Julian. So they gave you a name for territorial identification. But that is not your original name. Verse 7 gives us your original name and assignment. The Bible says the same came for a witness. So you call him a preacher or a banker or a governor or a president. But the Bible calls them witnesses. Sent from God as a witness to bear witness of the light. Look at this. That all men through him might believe. Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. It says, but you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And you shall be witnesses. He never said you shall be preachers. He never said you shall be apostles or prophets or bankers or administrators or, or whatever it is. You shall be witnesses unto me. Now it begins to describe the geography of your witness. Judea, Jerusalem, Samaria and to the uttermost part of the earth. But then that you are a witness. Unfortunately, those who understand this kingdom come concept are terrorists and people who operate in the dark world. Do you know? A terrorist can be recruited and on account of his assignment, he can go to a medical school. He's in a class with everybody. You call him doctor, but he knows he's not a doctor. He can be studying finance for 10 years and you say, my God, this man is growing. He knows that the 
the geography of the witness he does not confuse it with the assignment so when he's done because he's now a doctor it gives him access to a space are we together now when he now gets there he takes away his lab coat and takes back the ideology now he has the legitimization to execute his purposes this is the idea the Bible says you are a witness if you are a preacher then you are a witness that shapes the spiritual convictions of the people using the pulpit as a platform if you are a businessman for instance you are now a witness using commerce and whatever it is business are we together now it is important to understand this otherwise you cannot host certain dimensions of God we have a corporate mandate we are witnesses someone say I am a witness I am let the devil hear you I am one more time I, am I know you say you are an apostle and a prophet don't worry you are not lying but you are a witness it's a superior description you are a witness even Jesus was called the faithful witness that was the revelation of him to John in the Isle of Patmos he was called the faithful witness the moment you know that you are sent and that you are a witness you know the assignment of a witness a witness is a validator of a claim those in the judiciary here you know there is no need for a witness until there is a contention are we together if there is a contention the judge will say okay so do you have any witness then the witness comes and swears by whatever he believes that he will tell the truth then they now listen and the witness of that person is barren until he has something called an evidence your evidence is your token of truthfulness are we together please listen carefully so we agree that we are sent from God through Kenya or whatever nation you are coming from so your nation where you are domiciled is not necessarily your place of origin you came from God and passed through that soil are we together and then he says you are sent from God as a witness I want you to burn this into your spirit yes you are a Christian but you are a witness something will happen to you when you start calling yourself that name I am a witness I am a witness a validator of a claim that means everywhere there is confusion it now becomes my business to find out what is happening the moment there is any confusion if there is confusion in ministry if there is confusion uh, you know in the area of spiritual decadence there is need for a witness because every confusion on earth you've heard me say it is a letter that Satan is writing through men to God doubting his supremacy if a family is poor and suffering Satan is using that family as a canvas to indict the love and the integrity of God and God is sitting in heaven waiting for witnesses who will prove to creation that that statement is a lie so God now raises a businessman from somewhere in Kenya for as long as he thinks he's a businessman he will only make money and relax he excelled as a businessman but failed as a witness if that businessman comes and meets the family and says I have been anointed by God to take you out of this situation to change your life and change your orientation now that witness has come as a letter to Satan from God I am still alive and I am almighty are we together if a barren woman for instance is afflicted with barrenness it's not just about demonic affliction Satan is using her as a canvas to write a letter to God indicting God the audience being creation so God waits for a witness to validate his claim when a preacher comes and says in the name of Jesus that womb be open and the woman returns with triplets those are not children they are replies from God so whether it is God or Satan the canvas is man is someone learning now this it is this understanding 
that gives definition and purpose to the pursuit of power are we together your pursuit for power is not just a way of trying to be spiritual you are equipping yourself with the tools that make you an effective witness looking for power or anointing is a useless pursuit until you first understand your weakness even the geography of it if you now understand you are a witness then you can contend for spiritual power and the wisdom and all the graces that become the resources for your efficiency so if your witness requires that you are a billionaire and you are a millionaire you have failed you don't just say i have so much with respect to what we have to vet what you have with respect to the geography of your witness are we together if your witness is in the place of the academia and all you have is a master's you have failed because that will not give you access enough so what drives our pursuit and continuity is not ambition it is the desire to be effective witnesses this is the understanding that should send you to school should send you to the finance realm should send you to pray and fast any other thing that is, that becomes a sponsor to your your pursuit aside from the desire to be a witness a validator and a revealer of Jesus and his purposes is a total waste of time and you will eventually see that it was a waste today there are many people who talk about revival and the move of God but it is not connected to purpose that is the reason why the moment you begin to be spiritual the first thing you think about is becoming a pastor because that is the only template that looks close to revival our idea of revival is that if it does not end with making you a pastor it failed that is a theology that came as a result of we the mistake of understanding from men of god a revival should not only end in making people preachers a revival should end in making people effective witnesses now listen carefully most revivals captured the spirituality part people prayed people repented but most people did not maximize the purpose of many revivals and it died so at the end of it there were a few technological advancements here and there but the church did not sustain that momentum anytime you see the move of the spirit he's not just raising more men of god he's raising more witnesses if let me tell you this if Kenya has only preachers you are in trouble let me repeat it again whether you understand or not just listen first if Kenya has only preachers you are in trouble hmm. if Kenya has only businessmen you are in trouble if Kenya has only political leaders without any spiritual inclination you are in trouble are we together there must be the production and the spread of witnesses across every strata of human existence that is the true spirit of revival it starts with repentance brokenness are we together a restoration to godliness but it does not stop there this is what we miss about revivals the moment there is an outpouring people falling down healings and miracles and people love the Lord we say revival has come but we do not know that revival comes with a letter witnesses arise that is the letter that revival brings if you do not receive that letter you will enjoy the spiritual glamour the falling down and it dies off and people return back if you must capture revival genuinely it will take more than just an outpouring with healings and miracles it must translate to producing witnesses where someone can tell you after 10 years that I came for Rema fest and there was such a revival and then you say so how did it make you a businessman I thought you would make you a preacher he said that's the point it was because of that revival I own this bank today are we together what is the purpose of that bank to make sure programs like this 
never happen with stress again what is the purpose of that bank to give you an influence to step into that system where you can become listen read your Bible look at Daniel Daniel was in it was in Babylon is that true it was the exaltation of Daniel that preserved the purposes of God I hope you know that look at Joseph look at Moses all of these are the men of God we call today but you have to study the structure of their witness believers we have for a long time limited our understanding of the move of God and the power of God to only issues and matters of repentance which is wonderful and in order of priority that should be it we repent we love the Lord and the spiritual energy we are receiving through prayer and fasting needs to find expression and since we are not guided to know what to do with it we went, we go to the pulpit that's why several people today who are on the pulpit should be in the bank many people today who are in the pulpit struggling to prophesy and not seeing anything because the grace there listen carefully it doesn't mean they are bad the man is saying but i, I have so much spiritual energy I don't know what to do with it and we tell them that means God is calling you you are right but to do what <laughs> so listen the average young man here by the time fire begins to fall all that comes to your mind is prophet apostle that means I'm starting a church it may not be so that means the witness has been identified <laughs> listen if you do not discern this you can regret a genuine revival that comes because it will produce more error than it was even before the revival came. Every time there is an outpouring of the Spirit, there is a side effect. If not balanced with understanding for the people to understand its purpose, it will lead to a lot of things. You will find somebody who should not resign from an oil and gas firm. God is keeping him there as a Joseph, but he will resign and go to the pulpit. And it's not by God. He's only trying to give his passion expression. Are we together? Hear me. I know many people today who have left places that were their places of assignment all in search for God and their idea of working for God is to preach and many of them you know what I'm saying is not a lie many of them today are living miserable lives wondering okay so Lord I was doing better off you will hear them say as a CEO now I came here and I don't know what I'm doing because you have lost your bishopric there is ease when you find your place of glory are we together now don't get me wrong there are people legitimately that God has sent them to make those kinds of sacrifices that is true but the point is as we celebrate the spirit of revival it is important for us to understand the nature of the move of God and what it seeks to produce. The move of God seeks to produce more than prayer warriors. The move of God seeks to provide, to produce more than fasting giants. The move of God seeks to produce more than war giants. The move of God seeks to restore witnesses. Every time the program of God suffers, it's not the absence of men of God it is the absence of witnesses you can be an excellent preacher and a poor witness how do you know you are a witness when you can use your life your resources your access and your platform to reveal Jesus to glorify him and to advance his kingdom the difference between a successful person and a witness is that in the life of a witness kingdom come is the agenda that drives you are we together so let me give perspective to a few things and then we'll pray in order of priority 
what does revival come to do let me tell you this the first assignment of the spirit of revival is to stir up God consciousness God consciousness a passion and a hunger for spiritual things across a territory that means if the spirit of revival falls upon Kenya the first thing we should see not the only thing but the first thing is evangelism like never before what if it's evangelism the name given to the entire process that leads an individual to find Jesus Christ and to be established in the faith are we together world evangelization when the Holy Ghost came upon the apostles the first thing we see was 3,000 people in one night in one meeting coming to Jesus so in order of priority the spirit of revival would draw the hearts of men back to the cross oh I love this I love this back to the cross back to Jesus so someone who would ordinarily not pay attention to spiritual things because of that fire of revival through the miracles the signs the wonders and all that happens across Kenya you will see men both great and small bowing to the Lordship of Jesus that is the spirit of revival let me tell you this I'm saying it prophetically a time will come when people will be in their offices and they would just be prompted by the spirit to go online and they can hear a five minutes message that on their own will break them there that is the CEO of that multi-billion firm crying to Jesus you will come in and think he's sick and say sir can I help you he says no I have found something that my heart longs for more than money world evangelization is the first biblical index that revival has come there is a heightened awareness of God there is a heightened awareness passion towards spiritual things a day will come in Kenya where when it is service time you will think people are running because there's riot going on somewhere where are you going to they will say come let us go to the house of God regardless the denomination fire burning upon every altar you run away from one church you will meet Jesus in the other one waiting for you one thing for sure you will find is Jesus hallelujah and if you decide to lock your door and run away from church you will turn and find him there personally and he will tell you I am Alpha and Omega the first and the last these things that I show you right because they are true many people will have genuine encounters I'm talking of non-Christians it's already happening across the globe Kenya we must pray that in the name of Jesus Christ let the spirit of revival translate to massive salvation of souls hallelujah ye must be born again ye must be born again ye must be born again on the streets in the schools your campuses some of you God is preparing you as witnesses even in that respect that through your life territories will come to the saving knowledge of Jesus may it be so in the name of Jesus the spirit of revival that spiritual awakening bringing repentance where people are breaking free from carnality and the works of the flesh and genuinely serving God acceptably you would see all kinds of things addictions and all kinds of strongholds break away from people so that they can soar and serve the spirit acceptably you know a revival has come because there will always be a restoration of righteousness and the patterns of true holiness are we together the kingdom of God has three expressions the Bible says righteousness peace and joy where you will not you will not be here nor there 
God will bring you to a point where you can make, you make a genuine decision. I am a child of God any day. I am a child of God any time. On jeans, I am a child of God. On suit, I am a child of God. Wearing my lab coat, I am a child of God. Wearing my nightgown, I am a child of God. It is my singular identity. I do not plan to compromise on it. The spirit of revival. Is someone learning? So world evangelization, evangelization across the entire Kenya. And it is everybody's responsibility to see that everyone is saved, including the children. Do not make the mistake of negotiating with the devil like Pharaoh did, try to do to Moses. Remember, when Moses advocated the exodus of Israel from Egypt, Pharaoh said, all right, we'll allow you go. But your women and your children, keep them back. Moses said, no way. The women and the children represent the future. Without women, they can't be children. Without children, there is no future. So he's saying, you go, but let your future suffer. Moses said, no, we are all going. Someone prophesied, say, we are all going. We are all going. Kenya, it should not be the fathers that go alone. We are all going. In the name of Jesus, the little children coming to Jesus, that you will see a child of age 12 with fire prophesying by the power of God, laying hands on the sick parents. I hope you are not saying he's too small. There are little children in Occult who are less than 10 years who have brought havoc and destruction. They were not too small to be used by the devil. Joash was a king at age 8. Josiah was a king at age nine. Are we learning? Yes. The spirit of revival. We must, by the spirit of revival, bring nations, even this nation, to the lordship of Christ. It is important that we understand that the purpose of power is to empower us to be faithful witnesses so for every grace that you have received and will be receiving tonight don't just fall down and stand up and say wow God came to me understand that there is purpose it's an awakening are we together for some of you you may fall under the anointing and stand up and say what happened is after two weeks you will see that something is driving you to go and register a new company that's where it came from for someone as that fire comes upon you by the time you go to church on Sunday it will be fire upon that altar I'm being as simple as possible because I want everybody to be part of this God desires to invade Kenya and let me tell you the truth from the front here right to the back across outside of this tent and those following you can make yourself available and say lord i am available i am usable don't do it without me you can do it but let me be part of your program i cried many times and i told the lord i said as you are blessing people and increasing people please remember that i am available i know you can do without me you are god but let it please you that I become part of your program. Let it never be that my bishopric and I will take through my non-participation and my carelessness. Can I tell you the truth? In this end times, there are many people's assignments that will be given to others. Because you see, being a faithful witness is like a relay. Your faithfulness is what makes for the efficiency of another person. So if you are not faithful in your witness, you will cost someone else their efficiency. Are we together now? God will not sit down and allow you, say for instance, as a preacher, 5,000 souls have been connected to your anointing and your effective witness. You can't be playing games with them and wasting their time. God loves you, but he loves them too. He will not trap 5,000 people and leave them under an unhealthy shepherd. There are many scatterings that will not be demonic. It will be God himself picking his people to a place of safety where they can grow. You mark what I'm telling you. 
Hallelujah. So, I'm about to preach, but someone who is to give me the mic has refused to come. What is he doing to me? He's delaying my efficiency. I am ready to preach. God is ready to heal, to deliver, to bring the word. But just because of one person's not his inability to get the mic look how many thousands of people will suffer that is how it is there are some of you here by now if you had worked with god you would have been kingdom millionaires to bring a lot and your your refusal and your laxity god has subjected you to pray to fast god told you learn in the uh, get books on business and finances you refused and said no now there is a pastor who should not have backslidden if you were a sponsor to keep him alive and keep him strong because you refused to rise he was discouraged and he left